Hello and welcome to Flowcast, a podcast brought to you by the Dominican Sisters of Springfield. I'm your host, Sister Beth Murphy, and with me are Sisters Phyllis Shank and Judith Ann Haas. Sister Phyllis and Sister Jude, as we call her, share in common the experience of praying with Scripture and praying Scripture with others. And that's our conversation topic today. Our focus is Sunday liturgy. Catholics, and often other Christian traditions too, use a lectionary or a kind of schedule of readings from the Hebrew and Christian scriptures. That's predictable then. We know what biblical texts will be used on any given Sunday, or we can find out. That makes it possible to read them in advance of our Sunday services. For many people, including many of our sisters, taking time to ponder and pray with the Sunday scripture readings before Sunday Mass makes for a more meaningful experience at Sunday liturgy. In fact, at Sacred Heart Convent in Springfield, where both of our guests reside, Tuesday is Lexio Divina Day, the day for holy reading. That's what Lexio Divina means when a group of sisters gather to pray with the scriptures for the next Sunday. Sister Phyllis has led the group for several years, and Sister Jude has been a faithful participant. So today, they're going to share what they've learned about this fruitful way of preparing for Sunday assembly at Mass. Welcome, Sister Phyllis and Sister Jude. Thank you. Thanks, Beth. Good to be here. Let's start with you, Sister Phyllis. What has most attracted you to this process of Lexio Divina, holy reading? I think for me, it's that the power of the word comes forth. You know, I was introduced to the this method uh, when uh, I was a part of a parish that had an adopted parish in Haiti. When I went to visit the first time, they had just overthrown baby Doc Duvalier, and they said to me, you know how this happened? We had a base community that prayed with the Sunday scriptures, and the power of those words helped us to know we weren't living in a just uh, society at that time. So uh, I'm convinced of the power of sharing and and, uh, pondering the scriptures and letting them have their effect on us. That is um, really true. And I I think within the history of the Dominican family, we have a similar story that is incredibly powerful. Um, So do you mind if I share that just a little bit? That'd be good. Go ahead. So our, you, you both know this story, and I think many of our friends know it, but it's just so powerful. When the first Dominicans went to the Isle of Santo Domingo, what is today the Dominican Republic and and Haiti, um, they accompanied the Spanish conquistadors. But they used to do what we are doing right now. They sit down, they would sit down to read the scripture for the following Sunday, and then that community of friars would prepare the homily together for the next Sunday Mass. And Mm -hmm for the first Sunday of Advent in this one year, as they were grappling with the texts, they realized that the enslavement with which the conquistadors were holding the people of the island was completely immoral. And they determined together that they were going to preach a homily against the enslavement of the Indians. And they did that, and their action set off a a tsunami around the world that we say we're still experiencing today, that call for justice that came from listening to the scriptures in the 16th century is still a call for justice that we Dominicans have today. And so, Sister Phyllis, the story that you just shared about your friends in Haiti are very, very, it's very, very much in the tradition of the Dominican family um, to recognize the power of the word to change the world. So I, I thank you so much for sharing that story. You know, another thought that comes to me is when Dominic sent the friars out, he sent them out in twos. 
One was going to preach, but the other was going to be under the stairs praying that the preaching goes well. (laughs) I wonder if our uh, sharing and reflecting over the scripture together isn't a way of praying uh, before the preaching happens. (laughs) Just a thought. I I was thinking in some parishes, I understand the staff gets together uh, early in the week to talk about the homily or what might be in the homily um, after studying the, the upcoming Sunday's readings. So some parishes are um, doing something kind of similar. I think that's right, uh, Jude, and I and I think when you know that when you're sitting in the congregation on a Sunday, you know whether the preacher is well prepared or not, and, and it, it makes it evident in what you're hearing on Sunday. It always brings a smile to my face when on Sunday I hear echoes of what we talked about on Tuesday. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's, it's reinforcing what we've talked about. Sure it is. F- Sister Phyllis, would you tell us just very simply what is the, the process of Lexio Divina that you're using here at the Mother yes. House? This is the the model. I know there are different ways of doing this, but this is the model I learned from Haiti. It's you read the script, the gospel is what we focus on. You read the gospel and then you ask the question, what word or phrase leapt out at you? No discussion, just a word or phrase. Then we read the gospel again. Hmm. This time we answered the question where did it make you feel uncomfortable? What was challenging for you? You read the gospel again, and you answer the question, what does this say to us as a community of faith? That's the process we use. When I first joined the group here at the Mother House, I was kind of surprised at those questions because in my experience, they were, the process we used was more like what word and then what phrase and then what sentence. But I've come to realize how appropriate the questions that we use here at the Mother House, how appropriate they are for uh, our religious community. And I, I really have come to appreciate them. Yes, and I think that's true for any faith community. Um, that sees itself as a community. For example, uh, we're recording this on a Wednesday when we're going to have uh, a scripture sharing tonight at Cor Unum. And so these are the exact same questions that we will use with a group of women that gather at our house. And when we do that, it helps actually, in my experience, it helps form community. It helps us understand and think of ourselves as a praying community. And I think probably both of you have had some experience with that. I don't know if you have anything to say about what that means to form a community of prayer for Sunday, uh, for the Sunday. I was thinking that um, the group that meets here at the Mother House is kind of a, a, a smattering of a couple different ages and experiences. And I, I didn't particularly know these sisters or or hang out with them or talk with them. But once you hear what the Spirit is speaking through them, you do form like a bond. And and maybe any rash judgment you might have had on on these one of these sisters beforehand, you you come to um, love and appreciate how they are listening to the Spirit and sharing their thoughts with the rest of us. So I do agree, you you do form a, a bond. Yeah, that makes a difference in community life, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah. You know, I've often found, too, that that scriptures on those Sundays have the message we need to hear. Like, Last year, one of the sisters was struggling with the need of forgiveness, of forgiving someone. Wouldn't you know, this, as we gathered that Tuesday, the scripture was about forgiveness. And as we broke that open among ourselves, that made a difference as she 
met with the sister she needed to forgive. It, it, she said it made a difference. What I've um, appreciated is I also listened to word.op.org, which is preaching from some member of the Dominican family. It's a daily meditation. But every day they start out by saying, we're bringing you the good news of Jesus Christ. And I just get kind of emotional when I hear that, the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's what I try to focus on when I'm listening in the, um, just in personal prayer, but also in our group. What is the good news that Jesus is trying to tell me in this reading? How does he want me to um, respond to others after being acquainted with the, the reading, after studying the reading and meditating on it? How can I uh, love the sisters more by what is being said in the um, reading that day? Another aspect of that is that it's from all over the world. One of my favorite preachers on the word is um, Martin Battenhorst, who comes from South Africa. I, when, I just want to cheer when I see his name pop up, that he's the preacher for that day. It, it helps us to enter into different cultures, to be inclusive in the wisdom around the world, not just here in the United States. That's one of my favorite parts of the word. OP. That's a good uh, point, Phyllis. You know, we are trying to work on being intercultural. Th the same thing. I think uh, recently there was um, a speaker from England. Yes. Uh, a speaker from um, South Africa. And it, it's like, oh my goodness, they believe in God too. You know, they, um, they share the love that we are um, trying to to, to have for God and for others. Mm -hmm. So uh, I agree with you. Just for our listeners for a minute. So word.op.org is a project of the Dominican family worldwide. And it's a daily um, audio recorded, you might call it a podcast, um, in which a Dominican uh, sister, brother, priest, or lay member of the order. We all have our favorites. And I, Ruth Ann Henderson is one of my favorites. She's a lay Dominican from England who lives in Milan. Um, and I always like to, I cheer when I hear that uh, Ruth is being, <laughs> is the preacher for the day. Isn't it funny? We, we all have our favorites, but our listeners can go to that website and we'll make sure to have this in the, in the show notes so people can find this information. Um, but you can actually subscribe so that you don't have to go to the website every day. They'll send it to your email inbox, and all you need to do is click on the link, and you'll hear the preaching from one of our Dominican brothers or sisters for that day. So that's a tremendous resource. There are others as well that are helpful. One of my other favorites is uh, Catholic Women Preach, um, and there are women who are preaching on the Sunday Scriptures uh, and that's a video podcast. Do you? Do either of you have any other resources that you like to use? Now and then, I do listen to um, Bishop Barron's uh, reflection on Sunday. But I do find wordop.org my very, very favorite. And I kind of shop around. There's a Jesuit uh, publication that I really like, too. So, you know, I also have commentaries that I use, you know, books that help break open Maybe the culture of Jesus' day that helps me better understand the point he was making. Or Diane Bergant has a wonderful book called uh, Preaching the New Lectionary. Um, there's so many good resources. But, you know, I always begin, when I read the scriptures, I first read it and say, what does it say to me? Where does my life connect after I've spent enough time with that, then I go to the commentaries or I listen to the podcast to see if I'm on the right track or does somebody have an idea I haven't thought of that I need to spend time with. I, I was talking last week with the man who goes to a 
a scripture sharing in his parish, and he says, sometimes I say, oh, where did you get that idea? I've never thought of that. Or they'll say to me, where did that come from? And I say, I don't know. I've never thought of that before. Something happens in the sharing that sparks an idea, and maybe it has something to do with the spirit among us. Uh, but there's so much richness in that sharing together. That's what I was going to say, Phyllis, is being in a group, it's amazing how the the spirit speaks through the sisters or the participants. And often what um, that person shares with the group is exactly what I need. You know, and we're all reading the same thing, but it's it's so neat to, to have the Spirit speaking through each one of us in a different way. And I was, I was thinking, um, in our group, you don't have to say anything, you know, so you're not under pressure. It's like, what am I going to say? It's, you can just, you know, listen and see how the Spirit is talking to you. Isn't that true, um, uh, Jude? Thank you for saying that, because I think sometimes people think, oh, I wouldn't know what to say. I, I, I couldn't do that because, you know, I'm not that smart, or I, I just don't know what to say in that situation. And it's more important that you're in the community listening than it is that you speak, and you will know when the right time is to speak. Right. That's right. I was I was thinking, you know, by by listening to the reading three different times, it sort of trains me to then uh, listen more carefully to whatever participant is go what what the participant is sharing. You know, because I'm I'm used to listening listening intensely, and so I I um apply that to when uh, one of the sisters is speaking. And that, you know, I, I, I don't um, kind of doze off or whatever. So I, I think listening three times sort of trains me to listen to others then. I think that's a good point, too, because you're not thinking, what am I going to say in response to that? Or what, what can I say next? That's not your purpose. Your purpose is to listen deeply to what they're saying right now. Yeah. You know, another thing, Timothy Radcliffe, when he gave the retreat before the, the synod, one of the things he pointed out is when I hear somebody somebody's take that is different than mine, uh, that maybe that's maybe what they share is exactly what I need. Maybe it's the greatest benefit of that sharing that day. And so if you can listen deeply to that, you know, it reminds me of Dominic. Remember the, the uh, innkeeper? He listened all night long until he could find the truth of what the innkeeper was saying. <laughs> What's the truth in, in a different way of looking at something that, that you need to hear about? Mm, that's a beautiful connection, Phyllis. Right. You know, some people might not have the inclination, uh, the desire, or the opportunity to prepare scripture in a group. You know, we're all different, so it might be difficult for them. Um, could this same process work if you're on your own? I think it could. Uh, me too. Go ahead, Jude. Well, I, I was just going to agree that um, in the quiet of, of your um, your room or a, a space, you can read the scripture and and do the same process. You know, think about how you how you would answer each question and and listen to the spirit. What what is the spirit saying? You know, what is the word that comes to me? And maybe then that word or phrase is something that will stick with you all day long that you can go back to it you know, periodically throughout the day and pray with it. Or even all week long. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I just, I'm amazed, Ted, how, oh, what happened this day? <laughs> oh, it connects with what we're praying with next Sunday. It's amazing to me. 
Yeah, and as you said earlier, Phyllis, um, when we share on on Tuesday and um, uh, let it sink into us all week, and then when when the priest might say almost the same thing on Sunday, it's like yes. <laughs> you know, sometimes Jude, I think uh, on Sunday morning I hear the scriptures and I feel like, oh, I've been at this place before. I'm familiar with this territory. <laughs> You know, I don't worship at the mother house, as you know, I belong to a parish in Springfield. But I have to tell you, sometimes I, when I get up to the dining room on Monday, because I'm here for work during the week, I still hear sisters talking about um, what they learned, either from Father Bob's homily, or from scripture sharing at the Lexio Divina event on Tuesday. It does permeate this house, that's for sure, this attentiveness to God's word. You know, Beth, sometimes I think we owe that to each other. (laughs) It's something that as we commit ourselves to live in community, to the community of the word, oh, we we owe our uh, reflections to each other. When we did our... Our preaching. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we did our meeting in the parish about synodality in preparation for the synod, one of their conclusions was, we need to share our faith story with one another. That as we listen and walk together and talk together and listen and listen deeply, uh, we need to share our stories with one another. And I think the, the scripture sharing is a place where we can do that. Which maybe is one of the reasons we come to love each other more. <laughs> right. It's all related, is it not? So, yes. um, praying with scripture is not really an option for 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 anyone who is um, who professes to be a Christian. That our our texts form community; they um, develop our own relationship with God, and they propel us into the world, as you beautifully explained with that first story that you shared. Um, about the impact of praying with scripture on the fortunes of Haiti. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the word of God is that powerful. I wonder if either of you has another story about where you've seen the word of God make an impact in a, a community where you've served or lived. You know, um, I studied in the Holy Land, and one of the men with me was from Nicaragua he would take a canoe down a stream and stop from village to village uh, and and share the word. He even translated scriptures in their language and words that they would understand. And at one village, a man said to him, you know, um, I killed my neighbor. And uh, Father Gus said, why did you do that? And he said, because he shamed me and I needed to have my own honor. So I killed him so that my honor would come forth, not just be shamed. And so he said it was time for him to leave. He gave his little scripture book, and he said to the the people in that village, I want you to sit at your kitchen tables and read this together. Do the sharing. See what it says to you and talk about it. He came back three years later, and the village had changed. There was no one taking each other's life, and they gave credit to their sharing around the kitchen table that made a difference in their life. That is really powerful. Yes. I don't have any story, but um, one thing I I, uh, would also like to say is when the group gets together, often it's very evident that um, uh, Phyllis has done some research on the gospel and she shares uh, that information with us. Or, you know, she might tell a story or she might say, well, when I was studying in the Holy Land, it was blah, blah, blah. So it's... um, it's very wonderful to have the background that that uh, that Phyllis has that she can share with us because we certainly benefit from it. You know, Beth, another another story 
is a couple that would use um, give us this day around their breakfast table. And they would, it was just a man and his wife, and they would share over the scriptures every day. So maybe, maybe we feel called to go to our bedroom and pray with those scriptures, but maybe it's also the person you live with. It doesn't have to be a big group. It, it could be just the one person with whom you live your life. Um, yeah. I was going to say that earlier when you were speaking about commentary, that um, the publication Give Us This Day has um, some very uh, powerful reflections and stories in it. And I think the Mag Magnificat also, which is another booklet, and I'm sure there's many, many, I think Living with Christ, uh, there's others that are available that people c can use to... Um, spark new um, inspiration. I think those are all wonderful resources, and I'll make sure that we put links to those in the show notes that go with this podcast so that people don't have to try to frantically write down uh, what we're saying and that they can find those resources easily uh, where they get the podcast. So That would uh, be great. Thank you so very much for all your wonderful ideas. Um, I think, if nothing else, um, our listeners will have the idea that for, for Dominicans and for, Domini for the Dominican family around the world, our praying with the Sunday scriptures or with the daily scriptures um, is absolutely essential to the way we live our lives. But that is not something that is exclusive to, to men and women religious. Every person um, can pray with scripture and gain something uh, from allowing the Spirit to move in their lives through the through the words of God's Word. So I want to say thank you very much to both of you for being present, Sister Phyllis and Sister uh, Judith Ann. It's a delight to talk with you. Um, I know that our listeners will gain much from hearing your wisdom, and maybe they'll even share with us what they learned from you. Before we started, you said, now this is going to be fun. Well, I doubted, but it is. It was it was fun to share this with, with each other. Good. I'm glad. And maybe you'll come back again sometime. It's, it is it is fun to do a podcast. It's one of the best things about my job. Jude, do you have any uh, last words you want to share? I say, have a wonderful day, and may God bless each one of us. Thank you for joining us for Flowcast a podcast hosted by the Dominican Sisters of Springfield. The flow in Flowcast is an acronym for the life of the world, reminding us that we are called to do as Jesus did and offer our own lives for the life of the world. If you've enjoyed Flowcast, please tell your friends about it. You can go to our Flowcast website, flowcastlisten.org where you can subscribe to receive uh, each monthly episode in your email inbox, and you can invite others to do the same. We hope you will. God bless and have a wonderful day. For the Flowcast team, I'm Sister Beth Murphy.